The Open Studios event for the coming weekend will take place in Roxbury. To tell us about what's planned are two members of the Roxbury Open Studios Collaborative, Napoleon Jones Henderson and Darlene Smart. Thank you both very much for being with us. Yeah. Glad to be here. Uh, Napoleon, we, we've had open studios in different Boston neighborhoods for quite a while. Give us a little bit of the history of Roxbury. Okay, well, Roxbury Open Studios started in uh, 1999. Actually, we started, and that was the same year Roxbury Film Festival started as well. But the Open Studios has been annual in October since uh, 1999, and uh, it has grown since that time, and it's become a staple in terms of the larger community. Uh, the expectation that it'll happen each year, and uh, irrespective of the weather is sometimes not as agreeable as we would like it to be, but uh, people still turn out, and we've had a wonderful uh, maturation in terms of the exhibitions itself and younger artists and students and families coming and bringing their children, and just, it's a very uh, respected and well attended event every year. Darling, speaking of how this has evolved, talk about the, what's going on now as far as the leadership of the Open Studios. So this year is the first year that Roxbury Open Studios is actually put on by Roxbury Open Studios Collaborative. It's an artist-run organization, and from here on in, it will be put on by us. And so what we're trying to do is get the artists in the community to come in and join us and just to broaden and let the a community know about us and the art that's in the community. Well, what do the artists get from this? You know, ha having this event, all kinds of people walking around. <laughs> uh, but you get exposure, you know, you get to see other artists that, you know, you would never know about. And it's just a camaraderie once we gather in the events and we talk and we share and we find out new things that are going on. Napoleon, just the past weekend, I, I was walking from one hardware store to another in Jamaica Plain, and I stopped to look at photographs in a gallery. Right. So, is that kind of thing what you've got in mind uh, here, too? Oh, of course. You know, because people, as a matter of fact, we're going to have a, uh, uh, a very outdoor activity that will allow the public to also recognize on Saturday uh, there's something else going on. What should uh, they look for, exactly? Well, it's a live painting by an artist who will be actually doing a, a work of art. Uh, Hibernian Hall. Uh, inside Hibernian Hall? No, outside, outside of Hibernian outside. Hall, right yes. on Dudley Street. And yeah. as a matter of fact, uh, we have, um, uh, actually it's three locations in, in this context. We've got the location of Hibernian Hall. We have the First Church of Roxbury Parish House, which is in Elliott Square. And in Fort Hill, there are several, I think there are seven uh, studio artists, and I being one of them. Uh, up in the Fort Hill area okay, that will, uh, and Paul Goodnight down in the Piano Amar. Factory at AMARP uh, Collective over on uh, Atherton Street. Yes. He's a very renowned figure, Paul Goodnight. Oh, I, yeah. He was one of the people who was responsible for me getting here in 1974 to teach at Mass Art. Right. And this has been the news, and we're talking with Napoleon Jones Henderson and Darlene Smart from the Roxbury Open Studios Collaborative. Darlene, tell me about some of the works you might be showing uh, at some of these different locations. A lot of it is paintings, and then we have a lot of jewelry. We have glass art, and um, do we have any quilting? Some quilting? Yeah, and then yeah. we have people with prints and... Yeah. and drawings. Yeah, prints and drawings. As well as enamel on copper works, which is what <laughs> I do. Well, there's one thing that might have caught our viewers' eyes already. It's the Blind Boys of Alabama. Uh, that, can either of you tell me a little bit about that work? I think I can, because that's <laughs> my work. Okay, okay. <laughs> yes, it's a piece that uh, was inspired by the Blind Boys of Alabama, and um, I actually uh, has, have created it as an, a silkscreen print as well. And it's one of the uh, pieces out of a series I'm working on of traditional and historic gospel, black gospel groups. And the Blind Boys of Alabama is very, very unique in that category of gospel groups because of their life. They were in, in Alabama and in, in many parts of the South as well as the rest of the country. When children were born with difficulties such as uh, no sight or no hearing or unable to speak, they would be put into institutions. And these young boys were put into these institutions and they were, in a way, uh, uh, farmed out to sing at various events to raise money for the institution. And as such, uh, they became quite, quite popular all over the South and began to travel. And in, in 2002, quote, they were rediscovered by some people again. 
And that was when I saw this uh, particular article in the New York Times, and I decided I would uh, start that series of gospel groups. And that's how the Blind Boys of Alabama came into existence. Joey, we hear a lot about the ripple effect of these open studios and the neighborhood economy and you know, bringing the kids in, but, but what about the artists? I mean, don't you get more connected with each other? Doesn't that affect you in some way? It does. It really does. Um, because you learn from seeing what Napoleon has done and a lot of the um, artists from AMOP, they've been around for a long time. And so newcomers, they get to come talk and learn things, you know, and just keep, give you the inspiration to keep on going. We should mention uh, the times when this is going to be taking place on the weekend, okay. uh, from on Saturday and Sunday. Yes. Saturday, uh, September 30th, and Sunday, October 1st, from 11 to 5 on both days. And we'll also have an artist reception at the uh, museum on um, yeah, the, yeah, the Museum of the National Center of Afro-American Artists at uh, 300 Walnut Avenue. That'll be tomorrow the from Friday. 6, oh no, from 7, seven to 9. To nine. Yes. So the public is welcome to come and get a, a preview of some of the artists who will be there on Saturday and Sunday. Thank you both very much, Napoleon Jones Henderson and Darlene Smart from the Roxbury Open Studios Collaborative.